Spirit, the Twelve Dreams of Dr. Sartonius is my number 21 of 1001 albums you miss here before you die. And when I was listening to this album, I had a little bit of a negative vibe about it. Spirit has been in the news a lot lately. And they are currently, or the estate of lead singer Randy California estate is suing Led Zeppelin over writing credits for Stairway to Heaven. And the story goes that Led Zeppelin was opening for Spirit in 68, I believe, and that famous riff that we all know and love was actually taken from a song called Taurus. And the first time I heard it, I was like, you know, they might have, uh, you know, I don't know why they're waiting 40 years for this lawsuit to come up, but, you know, they might have a shot at this. Anytime that you hear them in the news, they are always described as being obscure. They weren't that obscure. Um, I don't know, not saying that I know everybody, and I heard a spirit a long time ago, and I don't know obscure bands, so if, you know, somebody who, you know, pays attention, at least commercially, you know, knows of the band, they're, they're not that obscure. So my story going back with Spirit goes back to 1984 and my parents picked up an album called The Spirit of 1984 and I think that they thought it was possibly a greatest hits album and it wasn't. It was a remake album and you know being a band from the 60s and they were very experimental uh, sometimes that they got some really trippy stuff on their records and um, so in 1984 they tried to put a you know an 80 spin on their classic hits from the 60s and 70s and as a kid I was nine I guess I love this album and you know it was one that I begged to be played all the time and I had heard, especially I Got a Line on You, was probably one of the most popular songs. And, and I remember hearing it, and I remember hearing a couple of other songs, and I couldn't tell that they were different. And my mom loves originals, and she would have said something if they were different, and she never did. I don't know you know, to this day, if she liked the album, if she was just putting it up because I wanted to hear it. Um, but I kind of got caught in this catch-22 that, okay, I was hearing the originals, and I didn't like the originals because I liked the new, but the new wasn't the originals, and so I just like, you know, screw it, I'm not listening to any of it. So, when... The Twelve Dreams of Dr. Sarconius came up. I kind of had, you know, I was like, yeah, whatever. But I ended up really loving this album. Um, for example, uh, there was a song on there called Mr. Skin. Mr. Skin is actually based off of Ed Cassidy, who was Randy California's stepfather and was also the drummer and he resembled strongly resembled Mr. Clean and so you know of course I said the spirit in 1984 was very poppy very you know very very 80s and listening to the version on Dr. Sarconius you know, there was a lot of organ, and there was a lot of horns, and it was really amazing. And 
I was very impressed with the opening Nothing to Hide and Nothing to Hide and Love Has Found a Way both you know were very experimental they would play with the hippie 60s folk and then switch to this modern that was modern even for 70s time and you know I would venture to say and I saw different reviews of this also kind of backing up this feeling that the rock stuff would have held its own in the 90s and you know that stuff just wasn't around back then and that you know something from 70 can you know still hold its own in 90 that was pretty in the 90s that was pretty incredible the story behind this album though I've mentioned that there was independent and spirit experimentation a lot this was the last album with the original members of spirit um, there was a me member Jay Ferguson who really wanted Spirit to go into a more commercialized direction and Randy wanted to keep the experimentation going and you know after this album was released Jay ended up leaving the band and in 1978 had his own um, commercial pop hit called um, um, Thunder Island. Okay. <laughs> um, good song, by the way. Didn't realize that, you know, both were intertwined. I love doing things like this and, you know, hearing people that I know as solo artists and finding out that they were in bands before. And, um, earlier I had mentioned about, you know, Randy California's estate. Um, unfortunately, he did pass away in. 97 in a drowning accident off of the coast of Hawaii he was saving one of his children that got caught in an undertow and eventually Ed Cassidy passed away later of of natural causes uh, I don't know if I mentioned this before but you know it was mentioned that he was 20 years older than the rest of the band which in you know 1984 seeing the band picture you know, he was very distinguished. Um, another one that was very distinctive was bass player Mark Andes. I remember the blonde pompadour leather jacket. Uh, and then there was Jay Ferguson and the horn and keyboard arrangements was David Bloomberg. Um, awesome album. I love this album. I am going to look for this album. And if you check it out, I think you will enjoy it too.